Blessings, blessings, and many, many, many blessings to all of my brothers and sisters out there in the faith, to all of you Levitical priesthood men, women, prayer warriors, prayer intercessors, prayer watchmen, and women who are on the wall, who are sounding the trumpet, who are watching out for the people of the highest souls. I just want to give him all the glory, honor, and praise, of course, because he is worthy. And whatever we do, as the old folks used to tell me in the church, when I used to go to church, they used to say, whatever you do, do it as you are doing it unto the Lord, who is our Father, who is Abba, who is Ash. Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, I am that I am. So I just wanted to return to this platform, this small little platform that the Father has given me. I am no perspective of any person, but I have a message that the Father has given me. And uh, I am really... Uh, Really don't have too many more messages to give. I can tell you that right now, um, because my messages are my library is almost empty. I have some messages still to give, but um, you know they're thinning out. And uh, this message is going to be called "Ask Ahia to Give You Discernment," Part One. I don't know how many parts this is going to be, but if you want to know, you'll listen. If you don't want to know, you won't. Um, I'm trying to get everything that I can get, absorb all that I can absorb from all those out there who do have something to bring to the table, because I am not in this alone. We are all in this together. Our Father told us so, and we can't do without each other. Nor do I try to do without anybody, you know, in the faith. So anyways, um, this message is going to be about discernment. But before I go into that, I want to read to you from the scriptures of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. And this is a highest comfort for his people. And uh, here in verse 6, it says, a voice said, shout. I asked, what should I shout? Shout that the people are like the grass that dies away. Their beauty fades as quickly as the beauty of flowers in a field. The grass, the grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of a higher. And so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of Ahia stands forever. Messenger of good news, shout to Zion from the mountaintops. Shout louder to Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Yehuda, your father is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord. Abba is coming in all his glorious power. He will rule with awesome strength. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding us close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed out the mountains and the hills? Who is able to advise the spirit of Ahia? Who knows enough to be his teacher or counselor? Has Ahia ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? or what is best. No, 
for all the nations of the world are nothing in comparison with him. But they are but a drop in the bucket, dust on the scales. He picks up the islands as though they had no weight at all. All Lebanon's forests do not contain sufficient fuel to consume a sacrifice large enough to honor him. Praises unto the Father. Well, this message is going to be about discernment. Um, you, me, and anybody who wants to make it through this is going to have to be able to discern what is going on in the spirit realm. I have been on YouTube for about going on four years now, and uh, I have always, always encouraged you and talked about discernment. Everything that manifests in the natural realm, it always starts in the spirit realm. If you don't get that, you're not going to never understand any of this. <laughs> okay? So um, I'm going to say it again. Whatever is happening today, it already happened in the spirit realm. It has to be ordained first there before it can come in the natural. And so the reason why you have to be able to discern because there are people walking around here on the earth that are deceived and they are deceiving others. There are evil spirits walking around on the earth in a human body that are masquerading as people, but they're really not. You have family members who have sold you out and some who are going to sell you out. You have friends, colleagues, you name it. They're, if they haven't sold you out, if they have not given their lives unto the truth, most likely they're going to sell you out or attempt to anyways. And the only way people can really take advantage of you if you don't discern what they're doing. For many years, I was taken advantage of because I wasn't discerning what was going on. The father told us, uh, Yahweh Shai told us, that he did not want us to be ignorant of Lucifer's wiles of his devilish ways. And um, a lot of people will try to continue to ignore Lucifer, what he is doing, but that's what he wants you to do. He doesn't want you to think for yourself. He doesn't want you to even, like, he doesn't even want you to consider. And some people just don't want to, they figure if they don't bother the devil or if they don't say or do anything, that he'll just leave them alone. But you are way far off because what he'll be doing is waiting to pounce on you to try to destroy you. So anyways, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about why I'm doing this video as well. Also, how it's all going to tie in together. It's been at least, time is passing by me so fast, but it's been about maybe two years ago <laughs> that this happened. I was kind of new to YouTube and I was, you know, surfing the web, as they say. And I ran across these Hebrew Israelite brothers. I'm not sure where they're from. They might be from New York. They kind of have that accent. But, you know, some people from New York have that accent. They could be from anywhere on the earth, you know, all over the world. So I had to listen to some of their messages and they were really, really good. And they were lining up the word of truth. One day, I was listening to their messages, and um, it was really a powerful message. I mean, it was really on time. And I usually, like, if I like a video, I'll say I like it or, or whatever, and then I'll type something in the comment section, you know, if I want to say something. And that particular video, I commented on the video before it finished, okay? And at the end of the video, um, the guys had said they were talking about white people, of course. And then they were saying, yeah, when that time comes, they were going to, you know, 
do to the white women with the white men had did to our people, our mothers and nieces and nephews and children. And after they said that, I was like, I can't believe you said that because why would you want to um, do to them what they did to us? In other words, if you hate these people so much or you or you dislike them, I don't want to say hate, but if you dislike what they did so much, why would you even want to touch them? I mean, honestly, if somebody has hurt me or whatever, and it doesn't even matter the color of their skin, if they've done something evil to me, that they really tried to hurt me, you know, kill me or destroy my life, I don't want them to touch me. I don't, I wouldn't want to touch them. I wouldn't want anything to do with them. Pretty much nothing. And so I did not agree with that. Okay. I didn't agree with that, but, um, it was too late to take my buck on it. So, but I learned from that point on that I had to be discerning of what I left in the comment box. Not saying that, um, I'm scared to leave any kind of message in there. But I had to be able to discern and listen to a video to the end to make sure that I did agree with it totally. Because, you know, like we used to say in church, once you say amen, you're saying you agree. Because that's what they said amen means. But there's a lot of debate on that. But anyways, it's supposed to mean that you agree. And so, um, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't believe the comments I was getting from people because of that. They were calling me names, you know, harassing me. Some people would ask me, you know, questions or whatever, and I would comment, you know, I would answer them back or whatever, you know, and um, it was, you know, pretty much always rude, always, you know, we're stupid, we're this, we're that, all these different things. So those guys, I guess they saw that these people were harassing me, so they jumped in. And they start going at it with all these other different people. So really, they were taking up for me, which was a blessing because I was like really tired of them harassing me, you know. So anyways, um, finally, they went away. Then I can't even find that video because I don't know the name of it or anything. And it just seemed like it disappeared. I can't even find it. I can't even get to it. So I don't even know. You know, because they're always updating stuff in their computer. So I feel it's probably hidden somewhere in here. But yeah, I couldn't even find any more to show you. But I did find this other one. I came across this other video about this white lady. And the name of this video is called A Question to White People. What are you proud of? Okay. Now, I'm going to play a part of this video. You can go probably look at it anytime you want to. I'm going to play a part of the video, okay? I'm going to stop right here, play a part of the video, and let you hear what this lady said. And I'm going to post on my this video what I said when I commented. And this lady basically went completely off on me. But you need to go hear this whole video in its entirety. And this is what I'm talking about, discerning, okay? At first, I thought she was sincere. But after she pretty much went off on me, I went back and looked at that video again. And I seen a whole lot of stuff at first I didn't see that I saw later. So I'm going to cut it off right here and I'm going to let you look at this video of this lady, okay? Me and my daughter were looking at this video uh, together one day. And uh, we both thought, you know, oh, she must really be sorry, right? For what's happened to Negro people, right? <laughs> nah, she was just playing a game. All right, I'll be right back. Shalom to everyone, to the children of Israel, to the 12 tribes, to the saints of the Most High. Um, I got this book when I found out the truth of who the true Hebrews were. It wasn't enough for me to just know. I felt it was my duty to go in and truly study their history and what they endure. Because I have a, a hard time, those of you with white skin say, it's in the past, so it doesn't matter. So my question to you, white people, is what are you proud of? 
what are you proud of? I'll say now, denounce the color of your skin, denounce your flesh. And um, I'm going to read some out of this book. It's called Into Egypt Again with Ships, A Message to the Forgotten Israelites, Elisha J. Israel. And I recommend it to anyone who wants the truth of who the true Hebrew Israelites are. And this is an amazing amazing book. Um, it's only about 150 pages, but it goes into history, it goes into scriptures. Um, so to those of you with white skin that say slavery doesn't matter, my first question is, if it doesn't matter, why did the white man go through so much trouble to hide who the true chosen are? This nation was founded on bloodshed, murders, lynchings, and I'm going to go in depth because I want you to get a mental image in your head of what these people, the Hebrew Israelites, endure from our race. If you have white skin, you're, you're guilty. Um, but it doesn't matter if you don't know your history. And it's time for you to wake up and to repent and denounce your flesh and stop being proud of your flesh. Flesh and blood's not going to inherit the kingdom. And I'm sure this is going to make a lot of white people mad. I don't really care. The truth is the truth. So, I'm going to start off, take a long, hard look at his back. It was a white man that did that. A white man. So. Bring what I said in the comment box. I'm going to read it and you can read it and you can see it yourself for what I said, okay? What I said was, and this was on March of um, 2000, March 11, 2015. This is October, okay? And um, it's a lot, lot more, but I only picked out certain ones because I just want to make a point to you. I said, wow, I'm shocked to actually hear and see a red person proclaim this truth. Now, I'm not lying when I say they're red people. The Bible says that they're red people. It does not say that they're white people. So that's why I said what I said. I wasn't trying to poke fun at her or anything. I am shocked to actually hear and see a red person proclaim this truth. And she was weeping. At least I thought when I first saw the video. Since I've had my computer in almost three years, I think this may be the fourth so-called white person admit to being ashamed of what her ancestors did to our people, which is the truth. I'm not lying about that, okay? And the scriptures do say, Godly sorrow works repentance, and the Father will never cast away a sincere heart. So that means the millions of other so-called white people are still in denial and are too proud to say they are sorry. Well, I don't expect anything or any apologies from them anymore because even the scriptures say they will not repent. This is not saying all um, so-called white people. This is saying the ones, the majority. And it's true because... I've been here in California all my life, and I've had nothing but grief from so-called white people, the majority of them. Very rare that so-called white people will do anything for you. Yes, you can go on a job or something. They might be nice to you or go in a store. That's their job. But other than that, it's all for show. It's not, and it's not real, and, I can, and I'm going to prove it to you, too. 
But that is that is only because of the worst poison in the world, and it's called pride. Even where I live, so-called white people are still mean, evil, and cruel. I'm not lying on them. This is true. Okay? But these particular ones are in the Ku Klux Klan. Now, I know they're in the Ku Klux Klan. The one, okay, there were some that lived in this front house. They moved out. The guy had on his truck, he took it off, but it said that he was a KKK. Okay? So that's how I know. I'm not lying on these people. I would be glad when their job, where they work, and boss or co-workers, find out who they really are because they're playing a game. It is called pretending. It's the truth. The stuff these people did here, and I'm going to tell you on another video that's coming up, all of the stuff that these people did to me here and how they did it, and I'm going to tell you why they were doing it. The father brought me here to show me something, and I'm going to share it with you. This is my prayer. I am grateful for the Holy Spirit touching this woman's heart, who the word sets free is free indeed. And I thought <laughs> that the Holy Spirit touched her heart, but she didn't. Now, what was most horrifying about this message here in the comment box is that a lot of Negroes, can you believe it? Negro people was actually taking up for this woman okay now i don't know if people are using people's faces or not but anyways let me just show you some of the stupid stuff that people will do and say this guy is called timothy hicks it says now he he went into one of my messages called graven images part one okay now listen to what he says according to the bible in deuteronomy 4 15 through 19 Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the. Where's the rest of the scripture? See, that's mockery. That's just trying to be funny. Then you got this guy called Samuel Quick Cooper. Hey, black child, I know that the four is supposed to mean creation and 11 equals this. Now, listen, that's mockery because that's my comment that I commented on Black Child's uh, four signs of the Illuminati. So these people go through the internet, and these are grown people. These are people who are actually adults. That's what's another thing that's horrifying about all this too. So this guy went in, whoever he got his orders from, and he copied what I said, and then he sent it back to me in my Gmail account. And there's another one, Carmen Smith and Cindy B. I always wondered why you could hear certain words so clear. This is another one where they went into the, um, you know, they going through my following me, I guess they're following me, stopping me on, online. And then um, here's a guy called Axelis King. This is August 8, 2015. It says, hey, I try to get these people. You can't. <laughs> this one can't even really write. I, hey, I tried to get to these people. You can't, these people, that's, he's talking about Negroes. It's not in their ability to understand simple logic and a thing called a blood test that will tell them they are African, not Middle Eastern. I tried as hopeless. Now they claim to be the Irish, the Romans, the English, hell by their account. And you can see there is spelled wrong. Everyone that was awesome was black. And anyone bad or meaningless is white and an oppressor somehow. <laughs> okay, we are 
hopeless year. Irish, I have never called myself an Irish for what? I don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And then this guy, Time Master, he wouldn't he wouldn't leave me alone. So I had to finally start blocking his comments. I told him to get a real life because I couldn't I can see that he didn't have one. And uh Here's a lady soul, 502. She was being sarcastic when she said this, but I had made a comment about, you know, no matter what you say, you know, when you make a comment with most of the white people, they they don't care, you know, like they'll always come up with some reason why what you're saying is wrong or they just don't want to hear the truth. They just don't want to hear the truth. You just don't want to hear the truth, not at all. And, you know, I just some other ones um, on here I'm going to put up here. And then somebody had said that um, something about I was scared to show my face or something like that. Well, I'm going to show you. Here's a couple of pictures. Here's three pictures I got on here that I show my face. I don't try to hide my face. I have a flowers in my little thing here because I love flowers. If you watch any of my videos called the whole earth is full of its glory, you will see in my videos, I use flowers, birds, the creation that the Father has given us to enjoy. And anybody who knows me knows I love flowers. I will send flowers, <laughs> pictures of flowers. And when I email people, emails for me, I just love flowers. You know, so I'm not trying to hide and I don't have a large following. You can see I only have eight followers. And uh, there's some new views I've had. And um, I'm not a boastful or a proud person. I try not to be. But um, <laughs> I just want to close out by saying this. About the comment on, you know, when the person said that, um, you know, we're always whining and we're trying to say this and we're trying to say that. And, you know, you have, you know, um, white people who say that um, slavery is still not going on and they say that we're just imagining this and we're not being treated bad. Okay, what I want to say first is this. I know that not all white people are bad people. They're not because I know that there are people who have been very, very kind to me and my husband. There have been white children that give my husband has given my husband very extravagant gifts um, what he works at in Palos Verdes. Um, I mean, you know, I can't go into every little thing and I'm not going to name no names because I don't want those people to get persecuted and that's the only reason why I'm not naming their names. But, And I'm not saying that even when I go into a department store or something that if a white person comes up to me and they're nice to me, I'm not saying that they're being insincere because I really don't know their heart. The father's going to judge that. But what I do know is you got some wicked, evil white people that live in this community that I live in. They live in Palos Verdes. They live in Torrance. They live in the South Bay area. They live in all the different areas around me because I've been around here all this for many years now and I know how they act. There is racist um, Ethiopian people that live in this area. There is racist Oriental people that live in this area. So I'm not just saying that it's just the white people, but the white people are the ones really who are more predominantly, you know, take over the community. So that's where I'm touching on this. I was in, I was in, um, first I was going to the Salvation Army the other day. And uh, that was just Friday, and I took my grandsons there to get them some jeans. And I was about to turn into a driving, a parking structure, a, a parking space. And this white girl, she saw me, but she just went right in front of me anyway. And I said, what are you doing? And she went in there, she parked anyway. So I said, okay, fine. You'll read what you saw. So I went and parked my car, and me and my grandchildren got out and went to the store. Next thing I know, here she is watching, following me, stalking me. So she was sent there to stalk and follow me. Makes you kind of wonder, how did she know I was going to turn into that parking structure? 
I'm going to tell you how I know she knew the not on this message. So I was like, okay, so first you take my parking structure. This is a white girl, okay, that did this. Not an Asian, not a black person. This was a white girl. That's what y'all call yourself, white, so that's what I'm calling you. Okay, then she has the nerve to start stalking me in the store. So what am I supposed to say that uh, she didn't know what she was doing? So when I put my camera out to take a picture of it, she took off, she ran. Then um, they have some type of hive mind, too. I, I, I don't have figured that, figured that out yet, but I'm getting close to it. But anyways, so I guess they relayed the message. I went to Subway. There's this white lady and her two children. They're standing in line, but they weren't like in line, you know, like behind, like when you go to the, the, the border at the subway, the, the uh, little counter. So they're standing there, just standing there talking about, oh, I don't know if I want Italian or I don't know if I want this or that. So I'm just standing there. I stood there for like five, almost 10 minutes. And I finally said, this is what I said. I said, ma'am, if you're not ready, do you mind if I go ahead of you? Well, we're trying to order. We're trying to order. I don't, why are you asking? I was like, so I said, Okay, um, I, I didn't ask her anything wrong. I don't think I asked her anything that anybody else would not have asked her, okay? But she had the nerve to say I was rude. This was a white lady. But I'm going to tell you something. The look in her eyes, the hatred, the disdain she had because I asked her this. I bet you on her job she acts totally different than that. See? I see stuff all the time when I'm up here, when I'm out and stuff. But, you know, I'm not a person to come on the internet and be telling everybody what I go through every day, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm not trying to depress people, I'm just trying to encourage people. But I'm going to tell you this because I want you to be aware of what's going on here. So anyway, she finally does go up to the counter. I'm still having said them to this lady. So I guess now maybe the Holy Spirit is convicting her. So then she goes, um, listen, um, oh, I forgot, I forgot one thing. I told her, I said, you know what, you're treating me this way because I'm, I'm, I'm a black woman. You just don't like me because I'm black. And then she said, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I said, well, well, well what is, the, what else is it? Oh, um, the reason I said what I said. It's because you were rude because I asked her if she wasn't ready. Did she mind if I could go ahead of her? And I asked her nicely. I didn't say, look here, you so-and-so. -and -so. If you ain't ready to order so-and-so, -and -so, I want to go in front of you. And if I wanted to, I could walk in front of her and got in front of them. But I didn't because I'm not... I'm not an unclassy woman, okay? I'm not tap, I'm tap, you know, I'm not tacky. So anyways, she's still trying to convince me that I was rude. So finally I said, lady, all you had to say was no. I asked you a question. You're saying I'm rude because I asked you a question? This was a white lady. But by now, there are other people in the store, right? In some way, they looking at her like she crazy. So when she said that, I said, okay, we're well, looking here. She called me rude again, and I said, well, what you need to do is, you need to face it to the fact that you just don't like black people and that you're racist. And you know what? She left the store. She never denied it. See, I've been a Negro all my life. I have went to school with white people. I have worked with them. I even now have to live next door to some of them, okay? And I, I've went to church. I've tried to get along. You know what? They don't want love. They don't. The majority of them do not. I don't care what anybody says. So, 
this message is going to continue on about the sermon and how you, if you listen to what the Spirit is saying to your heart, will be able to discern no matter what the color of the person's skin is, but if you live around a certain race of people, you're going to have trouble out of those people if you don't go along their agenda. Because there is coming a time where people are going to try to mingle with you. They're going to try to be nice to you, try to get close to you. After you've tried to kill me with witchcraft, after you've tried to cause me to be in an accident in my car, um, after you try, after you tried to destroy my children, now you want to start being nice to me and act like you care? Well, anyways, I'm just here to let you know, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. So anyways, uh, this is the end of Acts of Higher to give you discernment part one. And I will be back with part two. It is exactly 10.49 p.m. out here in the state of California. And uh, I am just so grateful that I was able to have a chance to do my podcast. I have been very busy lately. So anyways, just remember, you are always still in our prayers. And I hope and I, I know that some people are praying for me, but I pray that you will be praying for me as well. As long as you're sincere and you really, really, truly mean what you say in righteousness, in love, in care, in goodness, in honesty. So anyways, listen, the judgment is falling all over the state of California. So I will be back. I love you so much. Talk to you later.